So this is a look I can see myself wearing a lot this year. Very clean, very minimal, enhancing my natural features with a nice pop of color. Okay, so we have a clean canvas here, and before I begin with my skin prep, I'm gonna go in with eye care, and I'm gonna start off with um, these Manuka eye drops I found on Amazon. It's called Optimal. So I was researching about the power of Manuka honey, and I use it a lot for like my cuts, my burns. I have like this pharmaceutical grade Manuka honey that I swear by, and I was reading about how Manuka honey is also really good for your eyes, and I was thinking like, how do you put that in your eyes? If you think about it, honey has this thick syrup-like texture, like how do you put that in your eye? So when I was doing research, I found this brand called Optimal. It has fantastic reviews on Amazon, and I was just reading through them, and um, it seemed like it was life-changing for a lot of people who uh, were using like prescription-grade eye drops and everything, and they said this was game-changer for them. So of course, it made me curious, and I bought it, and I wanted to try it out for myself, and I'll be honest with you, it stings like hell. I'd say it's like half a second of a crazy burn and then it dissipates. But then for some reason you feel this relief in your eyes. And I've been using this every day for two weeks straight and I'm seeing, I'm just seeing like a huge difference with my eyes. They, they feel less dry, uh, they feel less irritated, I have less redness. I also feel like I'm seeing better, but I don't want to make that crazy claim, of course. But overall, like, these are really good. It's just, I would say the only downside is that it does hurt. But I will say after two weeks of using it consistently, they don't burn or sting as much. It's subsided a lot. And honestly, like, this is game changer for me. So what I do is I will gently pull down on the lower skin of my eyes to drop see immediately i just blinked because it has that stinging sensation but it's gone like i don't feel it anymore gently massage just making sure it gets all in the eye wow oh, it feels so good and then i'm gonna do the other eye this one doesn't sting as much and i will massage a little so i have this immediate relief in my eyes now and on top of that sometimes when i'm applying it i could actually taste the honey in my eyes which is like so trippy but it feels fantastic now i have so much relief it's like a double shot espresso in my eyes so now i'm going to begin my skin prep using my tried and true skin ceuticals the age eye complex and this is my go-to eye cream that i love just really make sure i'm getting in there and i'm working the product around my lower orbital bone because this area just tends to get drier you have less oil glands under the eyes compared to the rest of the face and that's why they tend to get drier easier next i'm using here the sicily uh, velvet nourishing cream a favorite cream of mine that my colleague tiffany gifted for me for christmas and it's also a favorite of hers too so i'll go in and kind of like map it out all over my face where i need most of it like this and now i'll just gently pat it in this cream just melts into your skin i would say the biggest difference with luxury skincare compared to the rest is just the how elegant the formula feels on the face it's a really beautiful cream it is expensive though but um i've always believed skincare is an investment for me so i'm okay saving a little money and spending extra on my skin okay so for the lips i'm going to prep my lips using lip cushion treatment this is essentially a very thin sleeping mask that you put on your lips and you can wear it all day or what i like to do when i'm doing my makeup i'll apply it during my skin prep and near the end when i'm ready for my lip product i'll remove it and it just makes the lips soft and it's easy to remove any of the dead skin so after that your lips are super smooth it's the perfect canvas for your lip product so you'll see at the end what i mean the final step to my skin prep for today is i'm using the Redui ageless mist and this just helps hydrate my skin and it creates a very thin even veil on my skin it really helps prep it for everything else so for my base makeup i'm going to use daydream cushion in gentle light this is like a skincare skin tint hybrid and it also has spf 50. so you see i have pigmentation around here so majority of the coverage will live here and here. You see the edge around here? I'm just going to very gently 
blend it out and soften the edge. So it's looking pretty good here. I think I'm going to stop here. I'll go back and finish it up. But this is a really good first layer that I can work with. For my brows, what I'm going to do first is laminate them in place, pressing the hairs down. So before I begin with my eye makeup, I want to block in my brow shape just to get an idea of how I want it to look. It doesn't have to look finished, just blocking in the shape. And I'm just following my natural brow shape. I'll go back to tweak anything once the rest of my eye makeup is more finished. So for my eye makeup, I'm starting off with a very light eyeshadow primer. Okay, so for the rest of my eyeshadow, I'm using here the Da Vinci palette. It's our newest eyeshadow palette we just launched. It's focused on a neutral color story, and my current favorite is this shade called Portrait, and you'll see why. So I'm going to look straight ahead and see where I want the depth to be which will be around here and here. I'm gonna really stay close to the lash line like this and this. And then bringing the color to the lower lash line. In a way, I'm kind of trying to create dark circles. It's kind of like that vampire vampy look, but not as intense. It doesn't make my eyes look tired. It makes my eyes look sexy, if that makes sense. This formula is really amazing because you have so much playtime to really blend and buff the colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue adding portrait and intensifying the area where I want more depth using very thin layers. Before in the past when I did a look like this, I would just go in and just blot the color here and here and then blend it out. Because I want my makeup to look more natural, what I've learned is just taking your time building up the layers rather than just blotting everything on your face first. So I've been creating makeup tutorials for so long and I feel like I have like a routine that I, I normally go to where I know where my makeup should go, the placement, what looks good on me and everything. But as you grow, your face changes, your eyes change, everything around your face changes. How I did my makeup in the past doesn't necessarily translate as well as how it looks today. It looks more flattering for my current features. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to just really work the product out and far out like this because I want to elongate the shape of my eyes you can see my eyes are starting to look bigger and this is still the same shade. I'm still using portrait. Just comes to show you the right color with the right finish can make the biggest difference. I used to think in the past I have to apply a lot of makeup to make it look good, but I've learned for my face and my features, it's actually better to apply the right amount exactly where you want it to be and focusing on the placement and the shade and the finish. All right, so looks pretty good here. So the next shade I'm gonna use is Sienna. And I'm going to apply her right here and here, just to brighten up this area so it's not too neutral. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth around here. For the darkest shade, this is Pumato. I just need a tiny amount, like that's perfect. So I want to apply a very thin layer, and I'm barely touching my eyes. I'm using very soft, feathery strokes. Before I go in with eyeliner, I first apply my lenses. I'm using here Spanish Brown from Olens, and they're very natural looking, you could see. You see how the color is really just within the iris, and it's like this beautiful bright ochre color. It just enhances my brown eyes, and it kind of lightens them, but in a very subtle, natural way. Now, I'm going to curl my lashes so I don't mess up my eyeliner, and it doesn't smear and smudge, because then you have to fix it, and man, it is such a pain. So I'm using Max Black Track and just using like a very skinny concealer brush. I'm going to gently lift my lashes and just tight line this area. Okay, tight line again. In the past, whenever I lined my eyes, the eyeliner was much thicker. It lived on my lids. But lately, I've been keeping it very close to only the lash line or just tight lining. It actually just looks more natural and it's more flattering for my eyes. And it doesn't look too top heavy where it makes my eyelids look droopy. So what I'm going to do is just gently tug just to lift the outer edge of your eyes so that you can really get in here. I'm going to follow the natural line of my lash line, which is going slightly down. So I'm also going to follow through and go slightly down like so. 
and then sweep out like this. looks like very thin very subtle sometimes what happens in the past is I'll make the wrong stroke and then I'm kind of committed to the line so here I can just take my time and just dab to build the line and then follow the contour and wing it out like a subtle wing not too not too heavy the liner part is done I'm gonna go back in using spumato that dark brown shadow and I'm just going to just dab it to mattify and to kind of set the gel liner in place so it doesn't move and budge and it kind of softens the line too All right now my eyes are ready for mascara and I'm using pick me up mascara which is a tubing formula so it's very gentle on the lashes and it's incredibly easy to remove you just need hot water and the babies just come sliding off your lashes and I'll use this time to sculpt my lashes in place so you have a little bit of playtime with this formula before it dries down so i think i'm good here right i'm gonna heat up this wooden stick this is a popular technique in south korea where they will use wooden sticks to maintain the curls i like this method more than a heated lash curler because i feel like it also cleans and smooths out the mascara too you look at idol makeup their lashes are they just look sculpted and they're always lifted so my mascara is done so i'm gonna go in and apply falsies on my lashes i just finished applying my lashes and you can see how it just instantly opened up my eyes so my eye makeup is in a really good place i'm not done with it yet i'll still go back and tweak it but i want to go ahead and finish my brows and what I'll do first is focusing on the middle of my brows just in case if you mess up you can always go and like fix it I'm going to sculpt the shape following my orbital bone and you notice how I'm not drawing a line I'm really just creating very soft feathery strokes so I'm not filling it in all the way see I'm, I'm filling in in certain areas but I'm still leaving it sparse in others I'm using a very light hand here, barely touching my brows. So now I'm going to go back in with my base makeup to really finish the entire look. I'm going to go in with concealer. I'm going to do like a dry brush technique where I'm just going to add the concealer where I need the most coverage, usually around here the high points of my cheeks where you see that pigmentation to just diffuse it I don't want to cover it up, I just want to diffuse it I think it's fine showing like your skin texture and so the pimple here and um, I can't really show you the product but it's a prototype which I know can be incredibly frustrating if you want to literally recreate my entire look but I recommend just using a concealer that you love um, and plus I, I really need to test these products out so it's it actually helps me a lot when I'm doing a makeup tutorial because I could really see how it looks. It, it gives me a better idea on how the formula is going to perform. Now I can go in with my sponge and really just clean up everything. And it just helps like blend everything so you don't see any edges or streaks or marks. With the same damp sponge, I'm going to go in a translucent powder to mattify the rest of my face. I'm just mattifying where I need it to be. Just going in and just adding powder to set my makeup in place so i want to add a touch of brightness on my cheek for that i'll be using so soft in baby we wanted to name this shade baby because it really gives you baby looking cheeks and i'm going to apply it right here and here the right blush placement can really change your face i like applying just a touch of the baby on my nose to bring more color to the center of my face and it just gives me like that cherub look and so from here I am going to use Baroque and if I do a quick little swatch this is what she looks like I'm using a flat blush brush and just like glazing it right here it just brings more neutrality to my skin so it's not too pink 
just helps balance out my face. So it's super subtle, but I don't know if you can see the difference. But I'm using this as a contour. I'm bringing it down here. It creates an illusion of a smaller face. So I'm almost done. I'm going to go in and contour using Terra. I'm going to use a flat brush. Remove the excess so I don't apply too much. Then I'm going to look directly. Very soft hand. To create my contour. So contouring is done and the last part will be my lips which I'm now going to remove the lip cushion. See how it's super smooth? For my lips I'm going to lift my upper lip and recontour them using Soft Blur and Kitten. And I'm just focusing the tip of my cupid's bow. I don't want to overline around here or here because it just makes my entire lip look too big. I'm just lifting the upper part of it. And what this does is that it just reharmonizes my face and it just makes my face look smaller, like everything is going in here rather than being pulled apart. My philosophy with makeup has always been just enhancing your natural features and just using the right precise placement of your makeup. For the lips, so for the lips, I'm using, what is this? Powder Kiss in Oat Paris. I'm going to use a brush instead to apply. I'm going to focus the concentration of the color along the center of my lips and blend out. Ooh, this color is so pretty. I'm going to create a little beauty mark and for highlighter, I'm just adding a touch of clarity right here. I'll just use whatever highlighter you have. The lip color is a little too bright for my look. I'm going to tone it down using Pink Roses which is also part of the Lisa and Mac collaboration. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Okay, this is working now. Wow, I really like this look. I just feel so fresh and youthful. And you can see how I didn't really need a lot of base makeup like foundation and concealer. Oftentimes like online we see people when they're applying foundation, they just drip and drizzle the whole thing on their face and you actually don't need that much. It's all about finding the right formulas, tones, and the right color placement. I really like how I look. I kind of wish I knew how to do my makeup like this when I was much younger. I feel like looking back, I kind of just went in with makeup and used whatever I had at the moment. This is something I can really see myself wearing more and more and I feel like this looks like me and I hope it inspires you to play up your features and have fun. Okay everyone, love you. Good luck.